Hello, everyone. In this video, Gabby and I are going to show you how to set up uh, transformation scenarios in Oxygen for XSLT processing, as well as how to uh, do some batch processing of XML data, and finally how to do some XSLT debugging using the XSLT debugger in Oxygen XML Editor. So uh, let's start with the very basic uh, operation, which is um, let's open up some XML from our um, from our exercise folder. And here we will open up uh, an XML file from Octavia Butler. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a transformation scenario. And what that means is a bunch of uh, preset instructions for how to transform XML files using an XSLT file that we've created to transform it. So this saves you a lot of time in have, so that you don't have to individually create individual files to process them and so on. So the way that we do this is you should see um, this button here, configure transformation scenarios in your oxygen uh, interface. So we'll select that. And then you'll get this uh, configure transformation scenarios um, window here. And what we're gonna do is create a new scenario, and then we'll select XML transformation with XSLT. Can I just add, just very quickly, sure, sure. when you're doing this, be aware that you need to have your the XML file you want to transform open in front of you. That's, yes. that's file, as Christopher does here, that's the file you should have open. The XSLT and everything else can also be around, but the file you need to have visible in front of you when you press new scenario is the XML file. Yep, that's right. It's always good to know what your working directory is. And that happens to be, in this case, whatever file we opened and where that file lives in the directory structure. And we can actually test that by going to this XML URL. Right now it says current file. Um, but if you were to, uh, say, browse for another file, suppose you wanted to process a different file, you would then see where you are in your directory structure. So here we're in the XML uh, directory within the XSLT exercises um, folder, which has these other folders. So that, that can show you where you are at. And as you just saw, the XSLT folder is in a different folder. Um, so in order to get to the XSL URL, you could either browse, as I just showed you, and suppose you're um, in the XML uh, directory, you can backtrack to the exercises folder here and select XSLT and select the file that you need. Um, but you could also do something else, which is instead of browsing, you could just step back in the directory structure using two dots and then redirect yourself to the XSLT uh, directory and then to the XSL file. So um, I'm gonna copy and paste here this dollar sign followed by current file URL within curly brackets, because that's just a programming instruction that says take the file name of whatever file you have open. And the reason why that's important is that if we select the output button, we can then out uh, as our output file, save the file that we're transforming as the current file that we're working with. So the file name of the, of the XML We'll give it the same file name and we'll just add .html to the end of it to make it an HTML file. And you can also select the open in browser system application um, and that um, will allow you to uh, hopefully get a automatic pop-up to generate a, um, an HTML uh, browser view. Now going back to this, let's just make sure everything's all right. Uh, sometimes you might need to check the transformer to make sure that you've got a Saxon parser. Right now I have uh, the right one, so that's fine. But sometimes if your transformation fails, you might need to check to see whether your Saxon parser is right. I'm just going to rename this as test transform for our purposes. And now I select OK. And as you can see, the transformation scenario has now been selected. And if we uh, click here on apply associated, then runs the transformation. And then, uh, as you can see, we've now gotten a, an automatic HTML 
uh, output from the transformation of the XML file. So that's how you set up a transformation scenario. And as we've just seen, you can do this with a single file quite well. Um, but there is the inevitable question, you know, suppose you had 50 files, how would you deal with that? Uh, so to uh, address that issue, um, I'm going to hand it over to Gabby, who will briefly introduce how that works. Are you muted? Yes, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, yeah, so what, what I'm going to show is um, is in principle um, how to go about um, running a scenario of the kind that Christopher has just created, but rather than running it on just one file, running it on an arbitrary number of files. If you if you have them all in one place, um, you can run it um, sequentially on fifty, a thousand. 5,000 different files um, all at once. Um, now, we don't have um, that, that number of um, XML files in the test folder that, um, that we've given you and that Christopher was, was uh, demonstrating from. Um, so I'm going to use an existing project um, instead just, just to show how that works. But, um, but if you're setting it up, here's your, here's your Oxygen um, screen. And, and again, we're looking at the XML file um, that we're working from um, here. Um, and what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a project open. And you see I have a project um, already um, set up here in my, um, in my Oxygen. But if you don't have a project set up, you can go to the project menu and select new project. And you simply give it, give it a name um, and, um, and it saves it for you. And then you've got a project. And then when you're in that project, you can simply select add folder. And you select from your system, um, from your hard disk, the folder that contains all of those XML files that you want to um, transform simultaneously um, rather than just one at a time. And it doesn't have to be 5,000. It can be just three um, um, if it still saves you time. Um, and so I've got in here, for example, um, I've got a folder already existing which has several thousand um, or at least a, several hundred um, XML files. And to transform them, I can simply say, um, select all of these files, um, right click on any one of those selected files and say transform and say transform with. Um, and transform with takes you to that same menu that, um, that Christopher showed you and he called his test transform, I called mine transform template, um, but that's basically the same thing. And if you select that and if you press apply selected scenarios, I'm not going to press it on this occasion, um, it will apply that to XSLT to each of those um, in my case, about two and a half thousand XML files, one after another, um, and and create all that number of HTML files um, in the location that we told him to put it, and, and also try and open them all in a browser, which is why I'm not going to press apply at this point because I don't want um, two thousand five hundred new browser windows opening as I um, as I attempt to do this demonstration. So I'm going to hit cancel. But that's that's the principle of that. Um, and I think all the steps that you need um, are there. And again, as with the, 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 the transformation that Christopher showed you, you should be able to plug in your XML file, your XSLT, and where you want to output it, um, um, as well as your, your batch folder now, and to do this transformation using any files that you've worked on over the course of, of your learning XSLT um, in, this, um, in this context. Um, back, back to Christopher now. Christopher now to um, talk about the, um, the the Oxygen XSLT debugger, which is another quite useful um, tool. Yeah, so getting back to individual um, individual transformations, you will oftentimes find yourself uh, running XSLT transformations and noticing that certain things aren't rendering correctly, and and you don't want to have to run the transfer transformation scenario over and over again and continue to generate HTML files when you really just need to solve a problem. Uh, so, so the way to do that is to use the XSLT debugger. And this is a really helpful feature. So um, the way that you select this is there's a, a button right here in the top right corner, the XSLT debugger. So you select that and then when you get is a split window 
a very useful split window here. And you can just uh, get rid of these extra um, extra things. I don't know why there's a hundred of them. Um, and any, at any rate, um, so now uh, let's open the XSL file that we were working with. And that opens the uh, XSL file right next to your XML file. And you get an output window. Um, so the way this debugger generally works is once you have your XML file open, you can select your XML source up here. And you need to make sure that your XSL source also matches what you're seeing in the window here. This can get confusing sometimes. Some people will have an XML file open in the editing window, but the source up here will be different. So you need to make sure that the sources are lining up with what you're seeing in the editing windows. And what's brilliant is once you're, um, once you start adding um, more templates and you want to test those templates in XSLT, you can then just select this arrow button to run the transformation and it gives you an output and it just shows you kind of simple output window here. Um, and this is a great tool for testing. You can really see very quickly whether what you're what you're doing in XSLT is working. And you can even generate um, output files like you do with transformation scenarios. So if I want to do a test transformation and call it test, I can just call it test.html. I can run that. And I could even go to my, um, my uh, folder that I'm in and there's the HTML file and it's been created. So it's a kind of short um, hand way of of testing your X XSL and making sure it works before you start doing transformation scenarios and applying, you know, whole scale transformations of lots of different files and data. Can you just show us again very quickly where where you find the debugger in, in Oxygen? Yeah, it's in the top right uh, here. Mm -hmm. So it says there's an icon that says XSLT. And if you if you hover over it, it's uh, XSLT debugger. I'm, uh, I think it's all also available um, in debugger. Uh, so the debugger uh, menu item also has it. Yeah, but the debugger um, menu so. item is only open when you're in the debugger. That's only available when you're in. The, oh, really? It's under, it's under window. Otherwise, window perspective. But yeah, ah, I haven't okay. seen it on the on the top on the top right, so that's that's why I was. Oh, good to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also just about transformation scenarios, you can also get to the transformation scenarios via the document menu, and then transformation, mm -hmm. and you have the same transformation options that you see as mm -hmm. buttons, uh, depending on how your your editing environment looks like. It might sl look slightly different for some people. Great. No, thank you. So yeah, that's um, really given people the toolkit um, for for working with um, XSLT in the Oxygen um, yeah. platform. So they can they can both run the, the the transformations, but they can also have this testing environment. Um, with yeah. them. this will be really useful for all of the work they do over the course of this workshop or any other any other. Could I just show one more thing? Um, it just occurred to me it might be useful. Um, so, you know some. Sometimes you might find yourself um, not having an XSLT file and you just want to do a quick transformation of an XML file that you have. You can actually go into the, um, the transformation here and apply transformation scenarios, um, or sorry, not apply. Um, configure transformation scenarios. And uh, there are actually generic conversions that you can use. So there's a there's a TEIP5 to PDF generic. Um, so you know if I wanted to take my um, XML that I just showed you and and try to generate a PDF, um, I was able to do that using a predefined style sheet that's in Oxygen. Um, so that's, that's another tool that you can use with the, um, with the, uh, 
well, it says it's empty because the transformation failed, but, um, but you could also do something like, um, uh, a generic, oh, there it is. That was weird. Now it works. Uh, but you could also do a generic uh, transformation to XHTML using kind of a generic XSLT template that's available in Oxygen. So that, that's another tool that you can use. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. Yes, that's, that's also very useful. Cool. Great. Thanks, Christopher. Right. Thanks.